What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're doing Weasel. Weasel is a recently released room from TryHackMe. The room is a bit different from the other rooms in that it is actually in the data science direction. It doesn't mean that you have to know data science or data analytics to be able to uh, solve this room. On the other hand, you will learn how it looks like when you pen test an environment built for data science teams. So basically, that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, first, we're going to scan the machine and then we're going to retrieve the flags. Okay. So the first thing we did all the time is to conduct in-map scan. So the in-map scan all the time starts with this command here. Now I copied the command as suggested by the room author here. As you can see, a basic in-map scan should return six well-known ports that are open. So we use this command to perform the in-map scan. And as you can see, indeed, we have a couple common open ports, 22 for SSH, 135, 139 for NetBIOS, which means we have SMB server running, and we have port 445 as well, confirms the theory. We have port 3389, remote desktop is running, which means this is a Windows machine. And lastly, we have port 8888, which has Sun Answer Book running on this machine. And that's for the in-map scan results. Now let's go back to the results here. So as you can see, first we have 22 for SSH. We're not going to deal with this because we don't have active credentials, active working, working credentials. We have um, SMP running on the machine. So we might try our luck by trying to log into the current SMP server and retrieve uh, maybe relevant files on the machine. As on the other hand, we have this port running on the machine and it has Sun answer book running. So if we navigate to this port online, as you can see, we'll be able to see this. Now, basically, uh, when you first browse to that URL, you are not going to be able to see the logged in view here. Okay, you have to log in. So I'm going to tell you what to do. So I'm going to log out. Okay, and log in back. So that's what you will see when you first browse to this URL. You're going to need a password or token to get access to the Jupyter book. Okay, so basically Jupyter in the environments where you can uh, simulate data analytics or data science uh, experiments or projects. It's very helpful if you are working in the data, data science field or maybe data analytics. It's based on Python. All right, so it's useful to know that, useful to know these information. Let's go back. So that's for the sport. So we need a token to get access to the uh, terminal or the Jupyter notebook where you can see all the stored information about the project, data science project. Okay, so now we have these ports. Let's deal with these ports. So basically, we try to log in now to the SMP server using this command SMP client dash L. And here we specify the address. And as you can see, we have these shares. Now, the interesting share comes here is this one, data science dash team. So Next step is to try to log in or list the contents of this share. So we use this command, SMB client. Again, we specify the IP address and then we double backslash. We specify the share name. And as you can see, there is no password or no authorization checks performed on the SMB server, which means we can log in freely. Anyone can log in freely, which is the, which is one of the most common misconfigurations um, committed by those who are not experienced in the uh, security field or basically not doesn't know um, the basic uh, security configurations that should be performed and configured on any kind of server exposed to the public. So absence of password, we are able to log in and list the contents of this directory. We have these files. These files are apparently related to the data science experiment or the project and as you can see, we have a Jupyter, we have the IPYNP. This is an extension related to the Jupyter. So Jupyter, when you save a project or create a file in Python, as you can see, you have to follow this format, IPYNP. It's also based on Python. Now, this is the requirements file. This is Weasel file, picture, papers. So you have to go through all of these and enumerate. Now, what, what happened, I downloaded a copy of this file. You can also download a copy of this file, but what matters here is this file, Weasel, and there is a file inside the directory miscellaneous. 
So we're going to retrieve weasel with get weasel. It's going to get downloaded to the current directory I am in on my local machine, which happens to be the desktop. And then I list the contents of the miscellaneous directory. And as I can as you can see, we have this file, Jupyter token.txt. We get a copy of this file. And as you can see, they have been downloaded to my machine, Jupyter token.txt and weasel. We display the contents of both files using these commands cat for Jupyter token and cat for weasel. As you can see, we have now the token that is required to log into the website. So we get the token here and we log in. So once we log in, we're able to retrieve the contents of all of the uh, project files. Apparently, these are the same files we just saw on the SMB server. Nothing different. All right. So the next step now is to get a reverse shell. Now, basically, when you run a data science or data analytics experiment using Jupyter, um, Jupyter comes with the ability to run system commands from the terminal. So if you click on new here and click on terminal, this will take you to this view. Okay. So once you get here, as you can see, we have an active shell. If I issue ID command, you will get the active current user, dev dash data science. Now the next step here is to transform this shell or this access into a shell. So I used bash, okay, bash reverse shell. And here with netcat actively running on my machine, I was able to retrieve the shell. Now let's start from as you can see, I have active access up until now. So when you run this, or when you do that, you will be able to get the first reverse shell. All right, let's go back. Now, next step, we want to escalate the privileges. Before we escalate the privileges, we have to find out what are the current um, commands we can run as uh, the current user. As you can see, if we issue sudo dash l, let me see where, okay, so, this one, this view here, what about this view? This view has the in map, okay. All right. So if you run sudo dash L, you will see that you are able to run this as root and this one as well. As you can see, this one run runs um, any command as the user dev data science. So if you try to run sudo slash pin slash su, and the command to run as the dev data science ID, it will return the ID of the data science user. That's not important for a privilege escalation. What's important is this one, slash home, slash dev, data science, local bin, Jupyter. So if you navigate to this path here, as you can see, local bin, and we list the current contents, we cannot see any file under the name Jupyter. So we have to create one. If you create a file and we name it Jupyter, we can then run this file as root okay so what will be the contents of this file it's up to you okay the contents of this file is up to you you can create another reverse shell you can put here another reverse shell, another bash reverse shell and open another open another listener okay so when you run the jupyter it will run the reverse shell and connect back to you as root easier than that we can change the permissions of the current bash shell on this machine and make it uh, would we make it or attach the suit bit set so it runs as root. So as you can see here, I created a new file called Jupyter Nano Jupyter, and if I use the as you can see, this is the contents of the Jupyter file I created bin bash, and it changes the permissions of the binary bash, attaches the suit bit set. Okay, now get back here. So remember that we can run Jupyter as root so if we run this as root it will run the file we created and this will change the permissions on the bash shell it will attach the suit bit set so if you run bin bash now scrolling down as you can see ls dash la bin bash it has the suit bit set which means if we run it now it will return the root shell bash dash p it will give a new shell if we execute id as you can see, you are part or you are the root user. But uh, unfortunately, if you cd2 slash root, you will see only these files or directories. 
you will not see the flags why because this is first um a window system so what you have to do you have to mount this the complete c uh drive to be able to view the contents so basically what i did here to transform the access completely into root i created a new password so let's get back here i created use it was i used open ssl to create a password okay the password is root one two three and six it will hash the password or give the output at ssh 512. so this is important if you want to use this inside the etc password file we copy this password and we go back to where we are to the shell we nano the etc password okay so what you have to do here let me tell you what you have to do scrolling all the way down so nano etc password as you can see here instead of x you will have to replace x with the password from here that you created paste it here and exit assuming you have done this you have now you have now changed you have successfully now changed the password of the root user okay so what we can do now scroll up okay so after we change the password of the user we hit or we display the contents of the first line of the etc password using this command as you can see the password of the root user has successfully been changed so now we exit from this shell and we change the access now from the current user div data science into the root it will ask for the password the password is the one you choose here root one two three and we now we get a new shell as the root user ID now is completely now the root the next step now is we mount the complete C drive to a mount point the mount point will be slash mint and this is the command we will use to mount the complete C directory once you do that okay you will see the, the full list of the files and directories under the mount point now we see the users and we see this user dev data science low privilege again we see that user display the contents of the uh, current working directory and we go to desktop to retrieve the flags so the flag of the first user user the text and then we go back to the administrator directory where we retrieve the contents of the root flag so that's how we retrieve the flags and that's how we solve this machine easy machine guys but it is something that um, not published or not, uh, I mean, not so many machines found on the internet about data science or how to do pen testing or maybe hacking on a data science environment. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video.